Hello and welcome to Cyber Skills Live. My name is Craig and I'm here with human computer interaction researcher Kieran. Hi everyone. We are interested in all things tech and today you're going to get hands on and learn digital skills in this interactive activity. Our digital world is full of different apps and websites. From shopping apps to games, billions of us rely on different apps every day. And we need them to be reliable, to work quickly and to be easy to use. And that's why design and usability of the apps is super important. That's right, Craig. We need more people who understand how to design and make apps that are easy to use. That's why employers are calling out for people with digital skills. In the future, they'll be looking for it for even more. Give you lots of opportunities to code apps, games and tools that will solve our biggest problems. I'm Kieran. I'm a human computer interaction researcher at the University of Glasgow. It's my job to research how to make computers more accessible to everyone. We're talking about designing an app today. We're not just talking about the way that it looks, although that is important. We're interested in interactive design, the way we use it. That covers a lot of different things, the colors, the fonts, the buttons we choose, and the way it's laid out on the screen. Interaction design isn't just about things you see in the app though. It's about how easy it is to complete a task. Think if you're trying to post a photo to Snapchat and it took five minutes, you'd probably just give up. And Craig, did you ever have to look up how to use Instagram, for example? No, I don't think so. I think, you know, I opened the app and I, I tried to work it out. And maybe the first time I used it a long time ago, I, you know, it might have been confusing at first, but no, I, I've never had to like look up the instructions for how to use an app. Um, not, not that I remember anyway. Exactly. So that's why the design of apps is so important. I think when was the last time you had to look up instructions for how to use an app? Probably never. We shouldn't have to look through lengthy documentation in order to just to use these apps. They really should be intuitive. And that's exactly what you're going to be doing today. We'll be investigating how we can make these apps easier to use. We are coming to you today from our top secret usability lab. Well, actually from our digital dens in Glasgow. And today there are hundreds of you joining us on the live stream. We've got schools and colleges and other groups from across the UK. So when we name your school, I want you to give a big shout in your class. Make sure that we can hear you from our digital dens. So let's say hello to Armadale Academy. Big shout out to Bertha Park High School. Carotherstown Primary School. And Denny High School. Hello, everyone taking part from those schools. Also a big hello to Douglas Ewart's High School. Falkirk High School is also joining us today. Also as Gower Shields Academy and schools across Glasgow City Council. I've also got a few more here, Kieran. I've got Kings Park Primary, Kinross High School, Leavenmouth Academy and Moffat Academy. Thanks for taking part. Even more, New College at Lanarkshire, New Battle High School, hello to Our Ladies High School. Red Bulls Primary School and Finley West Hill Academy. Welcome everybody, thank you for taking part. If you're an adult, you can let us know how your class is doing today. You can tweet along, you can send us a message using the hashtag CyberSkillsLive that's on the screen here and below us, and you can use the, the handle at DigitalWorldHQ. Today, you're going to become a human computer interaction researcher. Yes, so you've been asked by Scottify a Scottish music streaming service to evaluate the usability of their new app. Your goal is to make design recommendations that will make the Scottify app easy to learn and use, attractive and pleasing to look at, and accessible to everyone. You're going to work through a series of design challenges and tell us about your design decisions. So why don't we watch a little video to get, st get started.
That's great. So let's get started. So Kieran, we are talking about human computer interaction design today, and that's what you do. So what's your job all about? Well, human computer interaction, something is called HCI for short. It's the study and research about people interact and use computing systems. So I, I help make sure that devices or apps that you're using is user friendly. So what I do is I look into the future and see how these future devices will help us inquire on how we can incorporate them into everyday lives. For example, Craig, where is the most disgusting touchscreen you've ever used? The most disgusting touchscreen? Um, definitely McDonald's on Argyle Street on a Saturday afternoon. Have you ever been in there? Those screens are filthy. I don't want to touch them. Yeah, you don't want to go back. Well, wouldn't it be better if you could just point at what you wanted or flick away that gherkin you don't want from your burger? That's exactly what I'm working on. I'm helping design touchless interfaces for ways that we can interact with apps. I mean, it might sound a bit strange, but now we pay just waving our phones over terminals and that was seen as strange a couple of years ago. Totally, totally. Yeah, because now you don't even need to touch the pin pad. Yeah, that exactly. sounds great, Kieran. Let's talk more about that later. We've had loads of answers so far. You know, I'd, I think that you're, you're sort of a, an expert on knowing about when an app is well designed. Yeah, so I can definitely tell when an app is well designed or if it's poorly designed. It does make a big difference to me. And if an app is hard to use, I'd be much less likely to use it. We've actually asked some of you what your favourite apps and you find easy to use are. Yeah, so I've got some answers here, Kieran. I'll read some to you as well. Now, remember, we're looking for the more detailed and insightful an answer you can give, the more likely Kieran and I can give you a shout out. So Lewis from Armadale Academy uh, likes YouTube and they find it easy to use because it's easy to understand. Yeah, I agree with that. You can find those um, videos really quickly on them as well. Who else have we got, Kieran? We've also got Damien from Armadale Academy as well, saying they like TikTok. They like how easy it is to use because all they have to do is move their finger. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, David from Moffat Academy uses Google Translate. I like its simple design. Yeah, you would think with a really complete, you think of translating languages is quite a complicated thing, but Google Translate really tries to simplify it. In fact, it even guesses now what languages you're trying to use, doesn't it? Yeah. We've also asked people what apps did they find difficult to use and, and why did you find it difficult as well? So frustrating apps, what, what have you seen here, Kieran? So we've got Curtis from Kings Park Academy saying so you don't like Zoom. I have to say I'm there with you. I don't think I have any quite non-intuitive sometimes to use. I can also see that, um, let's see, some someone has OneNote. Oh, Josh, sorry, Josh from Denny High School finds Wikipedia a little bit confusing to use. And certainly I know what it's like to get lost in Wikipedia. The bit that of Wikipedia that I find confusing to use is editing it and knowing how to update a page and change it as well. So I can totally appreciate that too. We have Christopher from New College Lanarkshire saying their banking app. You can't even uh, work out where to find their money sometimes, it seems. Excellent. Well, that, that, that's not a very good app if you, you know, if you're meant to be using it to manage your money and you can't navigate exactly. it and use it. Yeah, that is quite difficult as well. So we know that some of you are already starting to answer through some of these questions. What you're going to be doing today is, is thinking about what makes an app easy or difficult to use. Because when an app is difficult or frustrating to use, sometimes that can be caused by bad design decisions. So the app might work perfectly. You know, it might be able to do the job. It is functional, but it also might look ugly or be difficult to navigate, or, or maybe it's giving you confusing messages. Today, you're going to learn about how to make better design decisions, which will lead to more usable, easy to use apps. Now, we've looked into it a bit about what an HCI, an HCI researcher does, but let's look a bit deeper into the design decisions they'll make. And let's start with choosing icons. Now, the Scottify app that we're using today uses icons as part of their interface. Kieran, can you tell us a bit about what it means to choose a good icon? Sure. So when you're choosing an icon, it must be recognisable and simple. HCI designers often use a metaphor or symbolism when designing these interfaces. So that means an icon is usually a picture which represents the action the user wants to take. So there's a classic example of this. Craig, do you know what the save icon is? The save icon? Yeah, it usually looks like a little, um, like a floppy disk. It's like square. Or you, exactly. at least that's how I imagine it in my head. 
Hmm. Exactly. So the save icon is actually an ancient piece of technology. That's why Craig knows what it is. It's called a floppy disk. On yes. for things like USB flash drives in the cloud, these disks were how we saved and transferred documents. So the save icon is actually a carried forward metaphor for saving to a floppy disk. Yeah, it's funny that because like we don't actually save two things like floppy disks anymore. It's been over 20 years since I would have used something <laughs> like a floppy disk. And yet like we still sometimes see that in icons as well. So I don't even see it as like the floppy disk anymore. I see it as the save icon. Yeah, I think that's quite common now and not a lot of people know what a floppy disk is. So it's a save icon. So when we're sliding icons to use with Scottify app today, those icons need to make sense to the user. They need to have a good idea what will happen when they press that button. For example, will it pause the music, will it add it to a playlist, or even will it share the track to Twitter? So design decisions are quite important and we need to choose icons that make sense. That's one key way we can make an app easier to use. So Kieran, we've got hundreds of people playing along just now and I can see that they're already starting to make some iconography design decisions. So let's talk about some of these. So one of the first things we asked you was to look at the print icon and tell us if it is a good design decision. But more than that, like what makes it a good design decision? So I can see from some of your answers here. So Cara from Leavenmouth Academy has said, it's a good design because it's simple and you can easily tell what it is. I would agree with that. It looks like a printer as well. Uh, Jennifer, we oh, yep. carry on, you go for it, Kieran. <laughs> We have Jack from Armadale Academy saying, because it's easy to recognize. That's great, exactly what you want from an icon. Yeah. And Sean from Denny High School said something very similar. This icon is used a lot because it's literally just to get, it's just a printer. It doesn't get any simpler than that. And I think that's, you know, if, if you can use the simplest icon to represent something and you know what a printer looks like, then that would be the best icon to use as well. Exactly. We yes. have a few people saying it looks like a printer, so yeah, just simple Spot as that. On. So Kieran, there was another design decision that we were asking people to make. Can you introduce this question? Sure. So the next design challenge was to design an icon for the new lyrics feature. But before that, we've asked... Oh, yeah, before that, we asked about um, deleting songs, I think. Yeah, so say, I'll ask you how, what you choose to delete a song from the library. So I have a few of your answers here. We have so Josh designed... from Denny High School. Yeah. Same because it looks like a bin. Yeah, exactly. I think we have a poll coming as well for this one too. Yeah, so we asked people to choose an icon that would represent deleting something from a playlist. So these were the four icons that you could choose between. What were the design decisions that people made here, Here, And you tell us based on what you can see. So we can see that the majority of people chose the trash icon. A few people for the red, uh, red cross, a few more for clothes, and very few for the pencil icon. This is exactly what I was expecting people to choose so for you, Craig. Yeah, I think that that seems to be quite a popular choice. I can see that the reasoning behind it as well, like, you know, Sam said the trash one's a good one because it's about, like, you get rid of it, you know, you're throwing it away as well. But he's pointed out, Sam's pointed out as well, that usually when you put something in the trash on a computer, you can get it back. Whereas that might not be the case if you delete something from a playlist, you might have to add it again. You can't just easily reverse it. So that's that's a good thing to point out. Exactly. Who else have we got here? Another one was um, Lewis. Lewis chose, I chose this um, song because it's like binning it from your playlist. Or, or maybe because you think that song's rubbish. <laughs> that's a good one, Lewis. <laughs> um, yep. Sean said something very similar, saying it's a bin and you put rubbish away. Like deleting yeah. it again yeah did anyone not choose that i'm trying to see if anyone had a good justification for not choosing we have quinn trash. here from living with academy saying they chose the red cross but they don't know why so why don't you try put in the box there see if you can make a guess i think the red cross still looks like a you know that i could understand that being a delete as well because red usually means like a warning or danger and cross like you're it's, it's definitely like saying no you don't want something so these are good examples as well and um, david from bremen school as well saying that i i'm they're talking about like the cross icon the one that's at the bottom left usually seeing that to mean close or delete so yeah i could believe that as well yeah, these sound like sensible decisions that you've made so far. 
So we also asked you to um, select a icon for adding to a playlist as well. Yeah, so the idea this time was that you had to choose an icon that was representing, you know, they want Scottify are adding in a feature where you can add songs that you like to a playlist. So it's a way of like collecting together songs that you really enjoy. And we asked you to choose an icon that might be used to represent that feature. What sort of things were people choosing, Kieran? So there's quite a few people choosing the heart icon here, which is what to expect. Well, the star is a very good choice as well. Maybe not the trash one as much, like definitely even if you like a song. A few people choosing the basket icon as well, which is something I wouldn't, I wouldn't have expected for this. What Green would you normally one. expect? When would you expect a basket to be used in terms of icons? I mean, if I'm buying something in an online shop, definitely. Try and put it, just put it into my basket, go to the checkout. But obviously you're online, so you don't do that. So you put it in the, in the fake basket, the metaphorical basket. Yep, so like makes sense star heart these are all like i've seen these being used in other places as well and that's one of the things that we spoke about here in terms of choosing designs you want to kind of like choose something that is easily recognizable that people would know how to use right away exactly and people are we have some people's answers here we have josh from denny high school she's in the heart icon so has connotations of love oh so you love that song that's right that, exactly. That's what you do, don't you? Oh, I love exactly. that song. That's something that you'd say. You don't say, you might say, I like that song, but you wouldn't say, like, I favourite that song. I star that song. I so basket that, that song. too, as well. Um, Oliver from Northwest Community Campus said, it's like a favourite using the star icon as well. These are all good examples as well. These are brilliant. We're going to, why don't we give you one more minute to work on some of this stuff? Some great icons coming through here. You haven't seen some, some great. Yeah. Let's introduce that last question then, Kieran, and then like, yeah. let's give people another minute or so to work through it. So the next design challenge for you is to design an icon for new lyrics feature of the app. This is a really important feature that will be front and center of the music player. So you can draw your icon in the little box there and send it to us and we'll show some of your designs on the, on the stream too. So what is this feature that they have to design the icon for? Keenan, what is it meant to be trying to do? So it's to show the lyrics of the song that you're currently playing. So I think they'll, what Scottify wants is they'll appear on the screen kind of in time with the music. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can read what the artist is saying. So I guess then when you're designing this icon, what, what are the types of things you need to take into account? Like what, what should you be aiming for? You should really be aiming for um, to show the user what that, what that button will do. So your icon should show maybe some words or musical notes. That's a good, a good idea. We can see a few of you are doing that already. They really should conceive what is going to happen when you press on that button and to be as clear as possible. Okay, let's have a look at some of these icons then. So let's have a look at, okay, this is Brandon from Moffat Academy. This is your icon here. So Kieran, what are you seeing here? I'm seeing like at the bottom, it almost looks like words, as if you're trying to scribble some words down, you're trying to show that some words coming up. I mean, the word lyrics above is, Pretty good for saying it's going to show lyrics, isn't it? it? Tells you right there. Although having said that, sometimes when the icon's really small, it might be difficult to make out like a word like that. It might be a little bit exactly you know, difficult to read. So that's a good idea, just writing, you know, writing the word in it. But maybe there's a more graphical way that we could describe these lyrics. It is a bit of a challenge. Yeah, it definitely not having text isn't always the best idea. But we use a good, good see what you wanted to do there. Let's have a look at another icon. Let's have a look at Roses from Leavenmouth Academy. Okay, so what is your initial reaction to this one, Kieran? It's, it's part of it's quite similar to the last one, isn't it? We've got some lines showing that maybe that's the text. I think on the right there, we've got a, bit of a, mu a small musical note. What do you think? Very, very small musical note there, isn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. It also has like a play button in the middle. 
That's it. So it definitely gives you that idea of starting something, yeah. So I think when you see those lines, like there's a couple of things that that could mean. That could mean like your musical notes that you would normally see. But sometimes you see lines like that. See if you were editing, you know, a text document and you were trying to like justify it left, right, justify, put in the middle, something like that. That's sometimes lines as well. And those lines represent the words. So I can see what you're trying to do here as well. Yeah, and this one has got no text on it, so it'll be a bit more recognisable and it's very small. I have to read any text, which is nice. Brilliant. I think it's difficult. I ha had a look at how Spotify do it. I think they just literally have a button that says lyrics. That's cheating. You know, but... <laughs> they should be listening to the live stream today. They should be. So I think this has been really good. It's been interesting speaking about the iconography, but why don't we move on to another section as well? So there'll be some more questions appearing for you on the screen for you to answer as well. So let's move on from the icons. So, you know, another really important aspect of app design that HDI researchers have to look at is accessibility. So Scottify has made a promise to make their app more accessible to everyone. And making an app accessible means that it needs to be used by as many different people as possible. So this means that you might have to make the app work for people with impaired vision or motor difficulties or learning difficulties or deafness or loss of hearing. Exactly. So accessibility is it really is super important. We don't want to accidentally discriminate against people. Everyone should be able to use technology. In HCI, we research new ways people can interact with their computers. Even 10 years ago, most people thought about interacting with the creator using a screen, a mouse, a keyboard. That's not going to be suitable for everyone. So we looked at other ways people could interact with computers, for example, using hand gestures, or using their eyes, or even their voice. I mean, most of us have smart speakers in our home these days, and we tend to control them using our voice, don't we? Yeah, that, so yeah they, that's how I control my thing. <laughs> yeah. And the, most, the vast majority of them don't have screens and certainly don't have keyboards. So well, it might be really handy shouting an instruction to a timer, to set a timer when baking a cake, but it also makes it accessible to some people. So these allow people who couldn't previously use computers to interact with them in an easy way for them. So if you're actually interested in making computers and apps useful for more people, then a career in human computer interaction can certainly help you do that. Excellent. So at the moment here, and people are working through some more design decisions now, they're having to make design decisions about accessibility issues here and differences that they can make. So why don't we give people just a minute or so to work through that? Sure. Sorry to see some of your answers coming through now. A lot of people correctly stating how many people in the UK have disabilities. It's a lot higher number than I thought. We want the, our apps to be accessible to everyone, don't we? There's a lot of people. Just more people here as their answers come in. Kieran, I can see. You want to give out some shout outs, Kieran, to people who are answering some of these questions? Sure. We can see here some people saying 1 million, 14 million people having disabilities in the UK. I think the answer is 14 million, isn't it, Craig? It is. It's a lot yeah. higher than I thought, yeah. So, where, where are, can you see what schools have answered those questions? I can't see from my screen, see if I can just load it up. We also That's have great. some people now answering their contrast questions. That's good. Yeah, I can see that um, lots of answers coming in from Armadale Academy and New College Lanarkshire, East Calder Primary as well. I can see that you're sending in your answers as well. Kings Park Primary, I can see that you've just joined recently, but thank you for taking part. Um, and quite a few answers coming in from Denny High School as well. So why don't we give people just another 20 seconds or so, Kieran, and then we can have a look at how people are getting on with some of these. Yeah, let's do that. 
Falkert High School giving us some words. Can I just say that there's been 2,000 answers so far that have come in here, and I've just realised that this is great. These are all really brilliant answers. Do you want to give a couple of shout outs, Kieran, about who's been answering some of these questions? Yes, we have Owen from Falkirk High School trying to find some accessibility issues in their app just now. We also have Aidan from Living Mouth Academy trying to find the different accessibility issues in the fonts there too. Okay. Why don't we talk? Should we talk about some of the fonts? Yeah, why not? Okay, fonts so... are a very important part of app design. Yeah. So can we so what 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 are we looking for when we're choosing a font for our app? Kieran. So we're looking for a font we want it to be readable and not to be too overly fancy because people who have dyslexia or other learning difficulties will find it difficult to read these fonts. Mm -hmm. So the font has to be very simple and very common. So there's use, there's actually like a book almost of fonts you can use for these sort of things. And we have one of them there called Blue. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, we can use these other fonts in different places. We can maybe in a title or in an icon happen as well. But I think as, as well, what we're talking about here is you can still use a modern font and you can still use something that looks good, but actually it's going to be good for people. So I can see here, these are the choices that you've made. These are the design decisions that you've made here. So it looks like about half of you are choosing that blue font. And I'm looking at some of the reasons. So Mason from Falkirk High School, um, your reason for choosing that was it looks nice. Okay, well, that's one reason to chew it. I choose it. But uh, Peyton from Lavenmouth Academy, um, you've chosen blue because people might be able to see it better as well. And I can agree with that as well. Um, all Academy has said that it chose that one because it's the clearest to read. It's, you know, the most understandable as well. So yeah, the, these are good reasons to choose the fonts as well. Let's talk a bit about contrast as well, Kieran. What, what's that about? So we're talking about contrast. We want things to be as easy to see as possible. That's why the color combinations we choose are so important. We don't want our icons or our text to be washed out where we can't read it. Or even certain color combinations where people have certain types of color blindness can't see the colors. So we have to be really careful the ones we choose. So we ask you to select out of four the best one you think would be for the Scottify app. Okay. So these are the, the possible co color combinations there. So what, what we try and look at here, Kieran, what, what does it mean to have a good contrast? So we can see most people are selecting contrast three. And now I would definitely agree with that one there. Well, we can see contrast four is also readable. It may not be the best, so we'll get into that in a second. But contrast three, you can definitely see the blue and whites there. Very easy to read. So what does that mean if, if the colours are contrasting? Does that like quite, they, they stand out between each other or there's there's like a big difference between them? Exactly. So there's a big difference between the two colours and they can be easily stand out between each other. So the whites there can easily stand out from the blue. Yeah, I can see that one at the top right there. See that contrast too? Like very few people have chosen that one. And that like to me, you, you know, even if someone who can see all right, you know, like I, I can't, I find that more difficult to read. If I was trying to use the app and that was the colours that they were using, it would make it more difficult to read and use. Yeah, it's the same for contrast one as well. Well, it's not as hard to see as, as contrast too. It's it's definitely not easy as well. When we look at contrast four there, well, lots of people will find that okay to see. However, people who have red blue color blindness will find that very difficult to see. So that's all comes part of the accessibility part that we're talking about now. Yeah, I can see uh, Gabby from East Calder Primary School. Uh, Kieran has said that. Um, some of the con some of the the contrasting colors the, the ones that are not working are actually hurting your eyes as well sam from kings park primary school said uh, they've chosen contrast to me because the blue is a nice background and the white is an extremely obvious color to put in front of it um, and also they've said it would be a good brand color for scottify because it's you know it's the saltire colors it's the, the blue yeah. and white of scottify as well uh, daniel from kings park primary as well has said that the light red felt as if he makes it easier to see. 
So I think red does stand out, but I think you have to be careful when you're using red in an app, even. Yeah, you do have to be careful when you're using red in an app. For example, red can mean delete sometimes, especially on an icon so you, or uh, an action you can't reverse. So these colors do matter. As I said before, if you have red, uh, blue color blindness, you don't want to put red and blue together. That's it. And it's like a red can be a warning, it's always like instructions, isn't it? So it's okay to use red sometimes, but it'd be a good time to think about, you know, why is it being used and where would you be wanting to use it? All right, Kieran, I think we've got um, one more task for people to be working through. People are starting to identify um, some accessibility issues in the app. Is that right? Yes, so Scottify wanted to make the app as easy to use as possible, as we said before, and they noticed some issues in one of their parts of the app, mainly the, was it now playing? It's the top songs section. Top songs, that was it, yes. And so they had to make a few changes, and we can see the two screenshots there from the Apple 2 mockups. So Scott, I ask you to see if you can spot the accessibility issues that they fixed. Yeah, so what, what do people need to do here, Kieran? So people need to look at these two different screens and they need to you need to click on the different parts of the app where you think there might be an accessibility issue. And then I want you to tell us what you think that accessibility issue was. How does this fix it? Who is this going to help? And then we'll read out some of those as well. So let's give you a minute or so to work through that. We can see some of your... You're spotting some of them now. Yeah, I can see loads of them coming through. Well done to people from uh, Kings Park Primary, Armadale Academy, uh, Derek from St Joseph's as well. Rudy from Kings Park, you're working through this really well just now. Fergus from Kings Park as well. Got someone wanting us to shout out Bathgate Academy. So hello to Bathgate Academy. And Millie and Maya are working together at Red Maya Primary. You're spotting some of those differences as well. That's really good. And Destiny from St. Joseph's, you are, I can see that you've recently joined and you're working through it as well, but keep going with those questions. It's going well. So I've got some people designing some icons too. We'll be able to see them later as well. Me and Craig will look through them and hand them over to Scottify. Yeah. So I'm going to look at some of these and uh, what people have said here. Is it possible in a second we'll bring up the, the two screenshots of the app and we'll have a look at them in just a second and then we'll hear some of your answers. There we go, that's on there. So we have, okay. you can see two screens here, we have Lucas from Moffat Academy is spotted and the browse button is super hard to see. Like, where is that? So that's in the navigation bar at the bottom. So yes, that's I find that very difficult to see. So maybe that's a color contrast issue there. Definitely. So basically, it's it's hard to tell if that's been selected. And Joe from Denny High School is also saying something similar. Not only is the icon really small, but it's really hard to make out what it is. Yes. That's right. It's it's so faint. It's difficult to to work it out. Thank you, Joe and Lucas, for that as well. And then Theodore from Denny High School saying the sign, the little add button's too small. Who was that said that? Theodore from Denny High School. Theodore from Denny High School. So what was the issue there? And the little add button is too small. Oh, yeah. Look at that, Kieran. It's like right at the very it. edge of the phone. How difficult would that be to press? No, yeah, I would think that difficult to press. Never been someone that has motor difficulties. Oh, absolutely. I mean, ha having like something right at the very edge of the screen is probably not a good design thing to do. You should always like push it in a little bit to give it a wee bit more space as well. Um, let's talk about some of this writing at the top here, Kieran, where it's got like the week's most popular and the description here. And what are some comments about that? Yeah, so Mario from Code Clan is saying it's not very readable and it's particularly bad for people with dyslexia. Perfect, exactly. I mean, I think that they've got enough to read. Imagine someone has, has a learning difficulty or dyslexia. No, it's, it's, the font's just not good. Isla from Leavenmouth Academy saying, like, that font choice is really not clear. 
as well. But in fact, I think Isla said not clear writing, which might also be about the words that are being used. So yeah, th like that's such a long instruction to give mm -hmm. someone in an app. Like when you're just glancing at a screen, you want to be able to like read everything on it immediately. That's probably not a, like, is that too much text? Is that too much description? Yeah, it's far too much text. Well, you can see Spotify replaced it with just the words top songs. So that text was completely useless, was not needed. And Shannon from Living Myth Academy is saying exactly that. The text was taking up too much room and too long. Brilliant. I think we've done a great job here, Kieran, because we've been able yeah. to spot these. So what, what were the three issues there? We had the, the contrast between the buttons, and then we had the, um, the, the sort of motor issue one that people might have, where it was along the, the right-hand side as well, and then the text as well. Yes, and they're all, Scottify will be very happy that you spotted these for them. So you get to do this as part of your job every day here in this type of thing where you research like what works and what doesn't work. Do you mainly look at future apps or do you use ones that people are currently using or is it a mix? There's a bit of a mix, but right now I'm looking at the future. As I said before, I'm looking how to replace touchscreens eventually. I'm I'm away from touchscreens now. You're over using it. your hand gestures in the air to try and use touchscreens. So that's my biggest challenge just now. And people with disabilities are a big part of that because some someone can't you move their hand too much. You may have to have the sensor quite low so they're able to use it as well. Excellent. Well, well done everyone today for taking part. Today you were thinking like a human computer interaction researcher and you learned that apps should be easy to learn and use, but they should also be attractive and pleasing to look at and importantly, accessible for everyone. So by evaluating the Scottify app today, you investigated what it is that makes an app easy to use. You learned about how icons are used to make an interface and you designed an icon for a new feature in the app, following some of those principles of metaphors, consistency, and standards. You also made those design decisions that considered the needs of users who might have disabilities like visual impairments or motor difficulties or dyslexia. And you identified some accessibility issues. And ultimately you've helped make the Scottify app usable by more people. So well done, well done. If you enjoyed looking at the Scottify app and improving its usability, you'd make a great human-computer interaction researcher. If you want to find out more about careers in human-computer action, you can check out the Digital World website, digitalworld.net. So thank you for being part of our HCI team today. We loved seeing all your design decisions. I'll be a missing this, Craig. We're on YouTube today, so why don't you give the video a quick like and subscribe to the channel so you can see all our future activities. If you're a teacher, you can tweet a photo of your report card to us at Digital World HQ and you can use the hashtag CyberSkillsLive. We've had so much fun refining the design with you today. So why don't you try some of our cyber security activities in the future? So we have Defend Sterling Castle or How to Rob a Bank. And these can be found on our website, cyberskillslesson.com. Brilliant. So thank you for joining us today. And it is goodbye from Kieran. Bye, everyone. And goodbye from me. Bye-bye.